Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 352 for Tuesday, the 17th of June, 2014. So nice to have you here. My name's Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hillary Rumble. Do you or a loved one have trouble hearing? Because we want to help. Tonight on Category 5 Technology TV, we're going to be taking a look at Bell Tone First. It's quite possibly the world's most sophisticated hearing aid. And uh, we would like to show you, one, what makes it so special. Also, uh, we want to show you how to win one, a pair of Belltone First hearing aids worth about $7,000. We want to show you what is different about Belltone. Uh, and uh, we have a very special guest to help us with that tonight. It's all happening right here on Category 5 Technology TV. We also have a lot of things coming up in the newsroom. The UK government can spy on its citizens. Use of Facebook, Google, and everything else since they are hosted overseas. Additionally, a helmet that bounces microwaves off your brain can determine whether there has been a bleed or clot deep inside. Mm. The US government has removed a restriction which will allow the use of highly detailed satellite imagery. <laughs> Always intriguing. What should we do? All right, carry on. <laughs> I was distracted by there's a lot of exciting things happening right here, so I'm sorry, Will. Oh, yes. And lastly, Star Trek's automatic doors have been developed in real life. Stick around. Mm. These stories are coming up later in our show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Krista Wells. Eric Kidd. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. Introducing Belltone First, a revolutionary new hearing aid. So small you can hardly see it. So comfortable you can hardly feel it. For the first time ever, you can control hearing aids directly from your iPhone. Pick up the phone, listen to music, and use your hearing aids like wireless headphones. Hear everything that matters. Try Belltone first. For a free trial, call 1-800-BELLTONE now. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Hey, uh, my name is Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hillary Rumble. Category 5.TV is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. You can find out more at cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, cat5.tv slash IAIB. <clears throat> Hillary, speaking of the Tech Podcast Network, uh, I was privileged to be guest host on Geek News Central Ooh, this past cool. week. So Thursday's show, go over to geeknewscentral.com and check out episode number 955. If you heard of Category 5 through that broadcast, welcome to the show, and certainly everybody who is new here. Uh, it's very, very nice to have you here. But uh, that was a lot of fun. Geeknewscentral.com, and episode number 955 was where I was guest host. Oh, very cool. want to remind you as well, our mobile website is up and running at m.cat5.tv. For those of you who frequent the site, you know that the version 4 beta is available now. It's accessible through your mobile device, and that's really, really exciting because it's got some great new features. It's uh, designed to run really, really fast for you, nice. and it has all episodes of Category 5 TV oh. all the way back to Season 1. That is awesome. This is Category 5 TV, and tonight we've got a very unique and special product to demonstrate for you. And Hillary, you, I understand, are, are going to do some signing for us because uh, we do have mm -hmm. some viewers who are tuning in tonight uh, who may not be able to hear the words that are spoken. Uh, I certainly do my best and hope that uh, you're able to read my lips, uh, but Hillary's going to try to help with that as well. 
Frank Skubski is joining us from Belltone, Canada. They are located at belltone.com. And uh, Frank, just a quick introduction. It is... Oh, and uh, it, it's... Let's just make sure we've got him. There he is. Oh, we got him. He's we here. got him on screen. There he is. Hey, Frank, nice to have you here. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for having me here. Frank, uh, you... Uh, I would love it if you would just introduce yourself and Belltone just right off the bat. Sure. Uh, my name is Frank Skubski. I'm the uh, general manager for Belltone Canada. Um, Belltone is a uh, world-known uh, manufacturer of hearing instruments. In fact, next year we'll be cel- celebrating our 75th anniversary of uh, helping people all over Canada, the United States, uh, around the world uh, to hear better. Um, we distribute products uh, globally, and uh, we are on the forefront of uh, hearing aid technology. Um, and given you know the growing demographic and uh, you know the increase in uh, you know the boomers now becoming senior citizens, uh, certainly this is a product that uh, you know certainly suits or fits a need that's out there today. Really cool. What what is uh, different about Belltone's products and what makes it unique in the market? I, I'd be interested to know what it is that makes Belltone the choice of millions of individuals. Well, I think number one, I mean. You know, to be around for 75 years, obviously, you have to be, you know, on the forefront of technology. Um, we're very proud of the wireless technology that we actually introduced uh, close to four years ago that utilizes a 2.4 gigahertz uh, FM frequency. Uh, just recently, back in February, uh, in a collaboration with Apple, we were able to bring out the very first instrument that uh is a made for iphone hearing instrument so it utilizes our 2.4 gigahertz fm technology along with a blue with a bluetooth smart 4.0 technology to basically have a hearing instrument that will interface directly uh with an iphone um an ipod an ipod uh an ipod touch uh ipads ipad minis uh really the applications are endless Really taking uh, hearing aid technology to the next level. Now, I, I would love to talk to you a little bit about some of the technical aspects. We're going to hold off on that because Hillary uh, understands a lot more about the needs of uh, an individual who has hearing loss. And so, Hillary, I'll let you kind of take over the interview and, and just have a little chat with Frank. So, Sure. Um, I was just curious about your design and um, what makes it different uh, compared to other companies and also maybe um, what's unique and and how that is helpful for the different ages. I know kids sometimes, their hearing aids are always falling off. Um, Mm -hmm. Do you have anything that makes your hearing aid better than other companies? Well, I think number one, um, you know, our products utilizing the wireless platform that we have, uh, at least a 2.4 gigahertz platform, um, we know that that's the technology going forward in the future um, in, in terms of being able to use it with different communication devices. I would say to this date, uh, you know, we just had a hearing aid manufacturer that introduced a technology that was similar, um, but that was just this year. I mean, we, we go back to 2010 utilizing this technology, so we certainly have a big head start over our competition. Um, the end users who use the product certainly you know they do like the you know the usability for instance with the smartphone however at the end of the day it's still an outstanding sounding hearing instrument it's very natural sounding uh, belt at belton we're pretty proud of the algorithms that we utilize to program the hearing instrument based on the individual's hearing loss that creates a very natural sound mm. experience for them but we do take into consideration a lot of the other you know aspects of hearing uh, because hearing is really it It changes so much. It's not really just like looking at something. Hearing can come at you from all different angles. So whether it's, you know, you're in a busy restaurant or you want to listen to music or you want to do different things, we certainly have the technology built in to address those different uh, listening environments and situations. As it relates to children, for instance, uh, and you talk about hearing aids falling off kids' ears and things like that, I think that that's just the nature of kids you know they're they're going to have a hearing aid on them and they're automatically going to want to pull them off so uh, it's just something that hopefully you know through use they're not going to do over time if I, if I can just interject, um, thinking about the design of these devices, you see that Hillary and I have got our microphones on for the sake of category 5 technology TV uh, as I understand it Hillary you're actually wearing a bell tone first hearing aid. Yes, I do have a hearing aid on. It's but in I this can't see ear, it. but you can't even see it. So while hidden and, and designed in a way that it's not 
noticeable unless you're like staring. Can you can you show us? Can I can't can you see? Can't it's even see there. It. it is there. There it is. Wow. Very cool. Um, Hillary, I'll I'll hand it back over to you. Um, so okay, I guess um, I was more uh, interested in the different like environmental situations. How does a, a user um, kind of tailor their needs to match the hearing? Like, how does is the app like user friendly? Is it easy to use? If if I may, I, I think that's one of the unique things about the Belltone First. What, what really uh, stood out to me is the fact that it does use an app and you can select different environments. And so if I'm in a restaurant, I can actually set it to a restaurant environment and, and be able to zone in on certain frequencies or remove certain frequencies. I, I suppose, Frank, is that so I'm not hearing so much the clinking dishes as I am the person who's sitting across the table from me. Well, I think, you know, the number one uh, purpose of a hearing instrument really is it's a communication device uh, more than anything. So we're really focusing on uh, speech and speech understanding. And that's the big complaint that people who are hearing impaired have in noise, for instance, because if you take a look at a piano, for instance, you know, you have your low frequencies on the keys to the left and the high frequencies to the right. What ends up going on a person who's hearing impaired are those high frequencies. And that's really what gives you your understanding and speech. Okay, so consonants really give you your understanding and speech, and they're all centered in the high frequencies. So really what the hearing instruments do, especially when they're in a noisy situation, is that noise happens in the low frequencies, and that really masks out the high frequencies and your ability to understand and speech. So what we're able to do with our instruments is that the hearing aids can actually detect when speech is present but also be able to detect when there's ambient noise. And what we will do is because ambient noise, for instance, in the lower frequencies, we'll compress that down. We'll actually reduce the gain on the ambient noise or ambient background noise. And that will be able to, you know, create uh, a little more accentuation on the higher frequencies so you can understand speech. And we do that a number of different ways through different noise reduction circuits. But we also have something built in here called directional microphones. So a directional microphone will actually create a field, and we call it more of a beam forming field, where the focus is in front of you. And that's usually where the person is speaking to you so that we can block out all the background noise, for instance, that's behind you. So that just creates a better listening environment when there's a lot of background noise. That's amazing. Really cool. It sounds to me as a, uh, and I'm completely out of, you know, my hearing is just fine. And so I'm, I'm not in this, you know, I, I, I don't know a lot about hearing aids and their, and their functionality, but I've always imagined that a hearing aid was really an amplification unit. But you're explaining that you're, you're able to focus on and actually improve the audibility of specific frequencies that have to do with speech and, and other things that, uh, that the wearer may want to hear and reduce those things that, uh, that we don't want to hear. Yeah, I mean, number one, uh, a hearing instrument's all about speech recognition and uh, helping mm. people be able to communicate, number one, um, because communication is really what kind of connects us to people. Uh, it does connect us to people. I'm listening to you right now and talking to you. Mm-hmm. Um, Although I don't really see too much on the screen, I see your picture, but yeah. uh, but being able to hear what you're saying basically is is what we try to restore. It's all about speech understanding. Um, with an app, you know, with the uh, the hearing instrument, yeah, you're able to utilize the app to be, you know, basically discreetly also when you're in a restaurant, for instance, make adjustments to the hearing aid. Uh, you can adjust the treble and bass. Uh, you can have preset programs. Uh, this hearing instrument, even through the app, has a geotagging function. So I can actually save a place. So if there's a location that I like to go to, you know, we have a lot of people, for instance, uh, veterans, for instance, maybe they like to go to the Legion, sure. for instance. So they can actually have a separate setting for that one location, say the Legion or a bowling alley or, or whatever, oh, wow. and they can save it in the program. And with the GPS that's built into your telephone, when I go back to that location, your iPhone or, or whatever device that you're using will actually ask you, hey, you're back in this location. Would you like to have it set to that way that you had it before? And you can say, yeah, so that you can actually enhance the listening experience of that end user. Incredible. Can, can those uh, programs, if you will, can they be tweaked by the user beyond just treble and bass? 
Well, treble and bass is is the primary one mm-hmm. um, that that's done for that because it, it's you're really going to be going into a program, for instance, where either it's going to be noise or it's going to be you know music. But yeah, you just adjust the treble and bass. You can adjust the volume a little bit too as well, mm-hmm. and then you can save that program. But there's a lot of other stuff that's going on in the background. You know, in terms of the noise reduction systems that are built into the product, wow. feedback systems, you know, to, to make sure that we're not running into any feedback while not losing any amplification. Incredible. Hillary, I'll leave that back to you. <laughs> I just have a cool story. So one of my friends, um, she identified to me that she has uh, some hearing loss in her one ear. And she noticed, like, I guess 15 years ago, um, She was having problems and and still through now and she's never used a hearing aid before. And I let her try my my demo one just to see like, oh, will it work, will it not work? And sure enough, she was able um, to hear like paper rustling like this at her desk. And and she's told me, she's like, I have not heard that sound in 15 years. So Mm -hmm. that was just a cool little story Mm -hmm. I thought I'd share. That's great. That's great. Yeah, and it really, I mean, the hearing aid that uh, we sent up for the demo really just has a, a very flat generic hearing loss in it. So, you know, these hearing instruments are all programmed. And actually, the Belltone First product is one of the very few products or the, one of the only products in the market where you can actually program the hearing instrument wirelessly. So you can actually have someone sitting across from you and you'd be making adjustments through our programming software or fitting software and making adjustments to the product. But number one, what we require is the audiogram. And that's basically the prescription um, that we need to be able to program the hearing aid individual for this individual based on their individual hearing loss. And then basically, once we do that, you know, we can make adjustments going down the road and we can save different programs for, for different listening situations. And like I said, through the app, based on the different places they go to, they can actually save up to 15 different places. Now, I don't think somebody's going to possibly save 15 different places, but that application is there. Cool. That's very, very, very cool. I like that. Yeah, and if, if your friend has a hearing loss just in one ear, um, more than likely it's probably in both ears, but it really depends on, you know, usually if someone only has a hearing loss in one ear, first thing they have to do is go see a doctor regarding that because that's what we call a red flag, hearing loss in one ear. But if it's hearing loss in two ears and it's uh, either noise-induced or age-induced uh, hearing loss, uh, usually it'll happen pretty equally in both ears, kind of like wearing glasses, right? Usually your prescriptions are pretty close to each other. Hillary, have we talked about uh, the the price of these devices? You know, are they available through OHIP or anything like that, which is our <clears throat> our uh, coverage here in Canada, for example, or in Ontario in particular? Well, I mean, uh, it really depends where you live, number one, in Canada, because there are different uh, third-party programs that are available. Um, In Ontario, for instance, there is a program available through the Ontario government, which will uh, give you a grant towards the purchase of a hearing instrument. Um, If you're a veteran, there's certainly programs there. If you're a worker in Ontario, uh, there is the WSIB program as well. You really have you really have to check, uh, you know, basically your where you live. And, uh, you know, if there's any sorts of extra coverages available. And what kind of price uh, is involved in a Beltone first? Well, I think, uh, you know, again, it, you know, the, the retail prices are, are set uh, based on where you're located. Okay, so it's, um, it's specific to each store, basically, is that? Probably, probably more like each province, really, or country, for instance. In the United States, you could see different prices. Okay. I think the one thing to really understand about when you buy a hearing instrument, though, is it's just not about buying the hearing aid. And, you know, it's something that you walk into the store and then you walk away. Um, yeah. Basically, when you're purchasing a product like that, you're also investing in the practitioner who's providing the service for you for the life of that hearing instrument and for the life of the next hearing instrument that you buy and the life of the next hearing instrument that you buy. So, you know, there are, there could be many times that you go back and you need an adjustment or maybe you need a cleaning. Um, really, it's it's the professionalism. It's, it's the service that's provided by that healthcare professional. Um, I love to use the analogy of uh, an orthodontist, for instance. 
you know, if you really took all the materials of getting braces and you put them down on a table, you'd probably have a lot of metal and elastic and plastics. But yet there's a cost associated with them, which is probably a lot more than those raw materials. Sure. But because you're going back and you're getting the service and you're going to get those results that you're looking for, that's really what what's the biggest part about the price. And I got th- I got from our conversation there that um, <clears throat> you're actually able to tweak the belt tone first to each individual application, which is uh, is an astounding um, feature to be able to, to, to do. So does that mean, uh, you know, if I have hearing loss that I need to go in and, and actually have this, you know, get tested and you mentioned a prescription. So I actually, you know, this is a prescription device that is going to be tailor made specifically to my hearing loss. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. I mean, every hearing loss is different. So mm. the, the product needs to be programmed in such a way uh, to suit the hearing loss that you know, or the or what we call the audiogram. That's basically your hearing test. Okay. Um, we utilize the results from the audiogram to program the hearing instrument to provide the proper amount of amplification at each frequency. Impressive. Hillary, do you have any more questions for Frank? We're speaking with Frank Skubsky from Belltone uh, Canada, belltone.com. And of course, in particular, we're looking at this product called the Belltone First. You've got another one here that I'd love to, uh, yes, to show. Yes, of course. It's a, a brilliantly small device that uh, does support Bluetooth and communicates with your eye device. So that's an iPhone, iPad, uh, you know, the various different Apple devices. And uh, the app, do, do we have the app installed on, your, yes, uh, on your iPod, for example? One of the things that really stood out to me was the, the fact that you can control this from there. But also, as I understand, you can answer phone calls um, and be able to actually use your your hearing aid as almost like a Bluetooth headset, but without the problems that are normally associated with using a hearing aid and a telephone in, you know, in conjunction with one another, because you're mm-hmm. actually using your hearing aid to take the call, which is really, really a, a smart idea. Um, if I can ask just, uh, and I'm sure you may have a couple more questions as well, Hillary, while mm-hmm. we have time um, speaking with Frank Skubsky. Frank, what are the risks with a device such as this, which is Bluetooth connected, what are the risks of, you know, a wireless device like this getting intercepted? Are there privacy concerns or are there any kinds of concerns with regards to, say, hackers intercepting the signals or anything like that? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I, I haven't heard of any instances of that. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, we're operating on, uh, you know, sort of an ISM frequency band, which is the uh, industrial scientific and medical band. So I haven't, I haven't run across any instances of anybody trying to intercept anything or uh you know trying to communicate maybe directly with the person (laughs) through the hearing (laughs) instrument so i don't know maybe they you know maybe they really are hearing voices in their head and it's not the hearing aid so we are not we are not specifically saying that you are hearing voices in your head no exactly uh, okay well that's that's good and and you know being that it's bluetooth i guess there is a certain level of security already assumed there so Mm -hmm. Do you have some more yeah. questions for Frank before we um, wrap up tonight? Just one more. I saw one in our our chat room. Some people were curious if um, you've had any work in the area of cochlear implants. Uh, you know, cochlear implants actually are, are dealt with. We have a technology arrangement with a cochlear implant company um, that actually utilizes our technology, the 2.4 gigahertz technology. But it's not something that we deal with direct uh, directly <laughs> because... Cochlear implant is something that's a, it's a little bit more of an invasive procedure that needs sure. to be done by a ear, nose, and throat physician. Um, we're really talking about, you know, hearing instruments that, you know, are pretty much non-invasive, even though they do go in the ear. Uh, but cochlear implants certainly are, are something that, you know, you'd have to go talk, someone would have to go talk to their doctor and then be referred to the right person. Cool. How comfortable are these as far as actually wearing uh, a belt tone first, say, you know, through a business day? Well, I mean, number one, uh, they don't weigh very much, so they yeah, won't. I can tell that uh, they won't be a you know a uh, a burden on your ear. Mm-hmm. You know, they're very they're very slim. Um, they are what we call this open fit technology. So, uh, some a lot of times we'll just put this very sort of small dome on the end of it, so it doesn't even really feel like there's something in your ear. Okay. So it's a, it's what we call an open fitting. Uh, before a lot of times hearing aids, you know, uh, even with some custom products, they would actually go in the ear and feel like it'd be like an ear plug. Um, we'd even put like little air holes in them, like vents, to give that feeling that they're not occluding the person. Oh yes. Um, so, 
Yeah, they're really, really comfortable. I mean, and they they can do so much, and they're very slim as well. And you know, we, they come in a lot of different colors too, so that they can match your you know your hair color or you know match the the color of your glasses, for instance, so that they're even more discreet. And that little small wire that goes down, mm-hmm. I mean, that piece actually in itself is is replaceable. So a lot of times you know that'll be the number one part that possibly could fail because you know you've got an electrical component going into a person's ear or in their body for instance so that's a you know that's a service that can be formed right in the clinician's office Cool. We could go on and on about how great the Beltone yeah. First is as far as the technology behind it and, and the actual hearing aid capabilities. We touched a little bit about its connectivity to eye devices. Um, even the fact that you can locate a lost hearing aid, you know, mm-hmm. if it's slipped in between cu- couch cushions, you can bring it up on your iPhone and find where it is. I, like, there, just so much thought has gone on into this. Um, I don't have hearing problems, Frank, but... I'm excited about these kinds of technologies and and certainly Beltone First specifically uh, because of the difference that these things make in the quality of life. And to to me, that's something that's really, really important for myself, my family, my viewers. Uh, And if, you know, if you are in need of, uh, you know, just improving your your ability to hear, I'd encourage you to check out Beltone.com. In particular, this is the Beltone First that we're looking at tonight and Hillary has uh, two of them one for the left and one for the right ear and we actually um, thanks to Beltone Canada and here at Category 5 TV we have a uh, a couple of these to give away and by that I mean a left and a right um, Beltone first um, so what you need to do if you have or if you have a loved one who has uh, hearing loss uh, all you need to do is go over to cat5.tv slash hearing and I brought that up on your screen for you just to uh, assist you um, in, in getting over to that website, cat5.tv slash hearing, uh, and you'll find out how you can qualify for that, uh, that contest. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and tonight we are talking with Frank Skoopsky from Beltone Canada. Frank, it is such a pleasure to have you here with us tonight, and uh, very, very, uh, you know, innovative product i think this you know as an outsider this to me really looks like a a hearing aid that you know if i was struggling with hearing loss this is the kind of device that i would be going for Uh, beltone of course being a a long-standing company that really cares about the quality of care that they're providing for their their customers or their patients or however you you say it really you know it's it becomes a relationship with the patient Mm -hmm. um, because you're improving their their life all around when uh, you give them you know the the gift of being able to hear as hillary was saying a friend who hasn't been able to hear the rustling of paper in 15 years put one of these in their Mm -hmm. ear and all of a sudden had that ability Uh, is just you know that's amazing to me very cool frank thank you for being here at category 5 technology tv thanks for having me tonight this is Category 5 Technology TV, and I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hillary Rumble. Thanks, Hill. Thanks for uh, letting me explore my world online. Now, I'm not a professional interpreter or anything. I don't want people to think I'm a professional interpreter. I'm not, but I do know how to sign. So Very uh, cool gift to have. Hopefully, you were able to understand some of that. And uh, yeah, so make sure you check out the contest, people. Get online website. You definitely want to check out that contest because you know I, I as I say this just improves the quality of life for someone with hearing loss. And if you or somebody that you love has that issue that you really want to improve, this is the way to do it. And that is cat5.tv/hearing. Would love for you to win. But in the meantime, and as well, get over to beltone.com. Check them out. Check out what makes them so incredibly special in the whole you know, realm of hearing aid products. What makes them uh, different. Uh, that is beltone.com. Very cool. Very cool. Well, it's just about time for the news, people. You are wondering. I will not be signing the news. <laughs> Nor will I. <laughs> just so we can uh, get through get through these exciting stories these are the top stories from the category 5.tv newsroom the uk government has revealed an intelligence service gchq can snoop on british citizens use of facebook twitter and google without a warrant because the firms are based overseas oh technicality Ooh, sneaky 
UK spy boss Charles Farr said that such platforms are classified as external communications. The policy was revealed as a part of an ongoing legal battle with campaign group Pi- uh, Privacy International, or PI. PI said the interpretation of the law patronizes the British people. It is the first time that the UK has commented on how the UK's legal framework allows the mass interception of communications as outlined by US whistleblower Edward Snowden in his leaks about global government surveillance. Can I just say, okay, we know that uh, web hosting companies have been doing it for years where, you know, it's let's host stuff in Canada because then you know that it's protected under the Privacy Act and, and right. that's you know, a safer way to do it. So I understand companies doing that, but governments saying, okay, yeah, we can spy on you. We can compromise the transmission of data between you and, say, Canada or you and the United States because it's overseas. Seems like we're grabbing a gray area and Very expanding gray. upon it, upon it. But that's a little ominous because... What does a company do, like Google or like Facebook, when you know, yeah. a government can step in and, and do that? And what do you do in the UK if that is a concern, if you're using online services you know, and entering personal information into these websites and knowing that your government is allowed to, without a warrant, intercept any of that information? Freaky weird stuff, people. Where do you draw the line? When, you know, other governments say, oh, well, we can hack into American servers because it's American. It's not. It's not on yeah, our side. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't know what to say about that. I'm just going to go to the next story and <laughs> try not to think about it anymore. Yeah, really. Ooh. Scientists say they have devised a helmet that can quickly determine whether a patient has had a stroke. It could speak diagnosis and treatment of stroke to boost chances of recovery, the scientists say. The wearable cap bounces microwaves off the brain to determine whether there has been a bleed or a clot deep inside. The Swedish scientists who made the device plan to give it to ambulance crews to test after successful results in the early studies with 45 patients. Okay, for one thing, just uh, let's get this, just put this out in the open. I won't even stand near a microwave, <laughs> let alone strap one to my to noggin head. and whoa, whoa, hope for the whoa. best. I suppose, you know, as a medical tool, they sometimes subject you to dangerous radiations in order to um, determine course of action. That's true. That seems kind of like, I don't know. fry your brain. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on to yes. other things. Yeah. I just keep getting freaked out. This news is freaky. Sorry. Okay, people, it gets better. Sites like Google and Bing Maps will be able to use their higher quality satellite images thanks to U.S. government restrictions being lifted. Companies had not been allowed to make use of images where features smaller than 50 centimeters were visible. But one imaging firm, Digital Globe, said it would be able to sell images that showed features as small as 31 centimeters. What? Now that is... is, um, in terms of reference, 31 centimeters is like... I'm going like... Okay, one, two, three, four... Last five, millimeters. No, centi- oh, centimeter. Okay, centimeter. 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 Centimeter is like that, right? Yeah. So 31, I don't know. What's that? Like this much? Yeah. Ish? I think. I don't know. I know I'm Canadian. I'm supposed to know all my centimeters. Canadian, eh? Freaky. It's freaky weird, people. From space. From they can see space. my pen. And they are rightfully allowed to do so. Freaking mm. me out. Anyways, Digital Club says that new satellites would be launched to take advantage of this ruling. The company's Worldview 3 satellite is due to launch in August and will be able to show key features such as manholes and mailboxes. Whoa. <laughs> sure. As the <laughs> government is monitoring these kinds of developments, they're thinking, hmm, wouldn't it be nice to be able to see manholes and mailboxes from space? I don't I think don't so. I don't know what it all means, people. Of course, there's the, there's the whole concern about privacy. That goes without saying. I think where something like this makes sense is when a plane goes down in the ocean and they have no way to figure out where it went. (laughs) That would this would be helpful for. That's where to me it makes sense. Why don't we have that kind of technology when we can? Because of bureaucracy and people's concerns over privacy, and it makes sense why I'm scared that someone's gonna. Be looking at my mailbox from space. Oh, yeah. 
Well, it says they also want to use it for general public use. The higher quality images can have other uses as well, as you mentioned, um, disaster relief, agricultural efforts, etc. Okay. So there's some good, of course, but there's some freaky potential for evil. Everything's freaky with you I'm in getting, the news tonight. I'm freaked out all the time. I think that there is some really good use. I use Google um, Satellite View quite often. Not quite as much as, I guess, I use Street View now. Mm-hmm. Street View is even creepier yeah, as far as that goes. Creepy. But it's awesome. And if privacy laws forbade them from being able to do that, then it would... You know, it wouldn't be as easy for me to get directions where I got to go. That's true. I like being able to see the intersection, how I'm going to see it when I get there, so I know, oh, yeah, I turn left at the Tim Hortons. But do you That's need so to be able easier. to see the printing on your newspaper or something? You know what I mean? Like, that's creepy. Yeah. Food for thought. Okay, people. well, for something completely not creepy. But you probably will enjoy it. As long last, some Japanese researchers have created an intelligent automatic sliding door. No longer must you wait patiently for the door to slowly judder open. Mm. No more must you be frustrated by doors accidentally opening when you walk by. This intelligent door even has the ability to match the size of the opening depending on the number of people walking towards it. And if it detects someone running towards it, it'll slide open at max speed. Yes, this is the glorious realization of the Star Trek sliding door that opens just in time for you to cross the thresholds. That is cool. Very Love cool. seeing technologies realized that started in Star Trek. There's a video of this yeah. on uh, our website, newsroom.category5.tv. you got to see it. I think where it's really, really brilliant is the fact that it intelligently knows whether you are wanting to go through the door or yeah. not. Yeah, how does it know it what I want? It reads your brains. It yeah. has... It sends microwave radiation through your brain. Freaky. It actually does Freaky. Doesn't. It's freaky. You said it wasn't freaky. It's freaky. <laughs> but if I think, I think of a supermarket where, you know, you walk by the door to put your cart back yeah. and the door opens wide and you feel <laughs> the heat come out because it's 40 below yes. out here and 50 above yes. in there because they got to regulate it and keep, you know, keep it pressurized and everything. And, and uh, the amount of wasted energy there. That's true. From people actually. walking by. That's true. So that it would intelligently know that, uh, yeah, this guy wants to walk through the door. And it sounds sci-fi. Oh, and that's does. why you've got to check out that video. <laughs> because it's actually legit. Too legit to quit. Yo. It's incredible. I want one of these doors on the new studio. Maybe. Think we have the budget for it? <laughs> if uh, someone sends us a little something our way, it's oh, possible. We'll talk about that in a minute. Anyways, you can check out that video on our website and get the full stories online at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by Tennessee Frank and our amazing community of viewers. If you hear something freaky, or maybe not freaky, and you think it's worthy of honor <laughs> mention, send us an email at, category, at newsroom at category5.tv. From the newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Thanks, Hill. Tonight's show is brought to you in part by Belltone. Learn why Belltone is the choice of millions when it comes to fantastic hearing care. Check out Belltone first, a revolutionary made-for-iPhone hearing aid. Visit belltone.com, or for a free trial, give them a call, 1-800-BELLTONE-NOW. And that, of course, is Belltone with one L. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. So nice to have you here tonight. I'm Hillary Rumble, the signing... Superstar. Guru. There you go. Signing <laughs> superstar. The three S's. Okay, so we alluded to it. What's the big news, Hill? I don't think anyone can handle it because I know I'm you freaking it? out. Are you? <laughs> it's, you know, do, am I you saying do it? It's your okay. news. It's your news. You tell them. Studio D is a go. Woo! Yes. We need fanfare. There you go. Yeah, applause. Everybody who participated in our Indiegogo campaign, I want to thank you personally, um, you know, as much as I can through the the broadcast. But the contributions, now we were originally going to renovate my garage into a new studio space. Yes. That was the dream because we want to get Category 5 into a permanent home or at least into, you know, something other than Robbie's basement when Robbie has a growing family of 
you know, three children. My oldest is nine now, and it's hard to believe. <laughs> uh, you saw her on the show just, uh, well, one week ago was mm-hmm. her, her ninth birthday. So, uh, But uh, that didn't work out. I mean, going into the garage was my, my goal originally, uh, but the renovations were just going to cost so much money, and we got to about 17% of our goal in our fundraising campaign. And uh, while that doesn't sound like a lot, there it put some money in the bank mm-hmm. to help us um, as we planned out what we were going to do next. So uh, there is a local company, which you're going to learn more about in the future, uh, who has actually contributed, donated some studio space to Category 5. They had some office space that was not being used. Very cool. Um, so that's very, very exciting because it just couldn't be done, uh, you know, based on the... Uh, we're volunteers here and we sell very little advertising and, and we're supported by your viewer do- contributions, donations. Uh, and that's how we are able to uh, maintain uh, this the success of the show and being able to broadcast around the world every week. Uh, but with this studio space, of course, we've got to do some renovations. Mm-hmm, we've got to mm-hmm. do a, a fair bit of cleaning. It hasn't been used for several years, so um, it is, it's a bit of a mess. There's been some water damage, but they have fixed the leak. They fixed the leak right away, oh, but okay, the damage is still there as far as mm. some drywall is, is bubbled out and stuff. So we've got to tear mm. out a bit of drywall. We've got to put it in. But all those things are completely doable through um, the volunteers who are going to be helping us out and through your contributions that, uh, that were sent in during our Indiegogo campaign. Um, so that huge bill of having to build a studio in Robbie's garage, which needed reframing and insulation mm-hmm. and soundproofing and uh, the flow of air and conduits run for, uh, for internet cables and all this stuff, that expense doesn't have to happen anymore now we've got a space that structurally is sound we have to rework the inside we've got to paint the whole place uh, because it is a mess but it is structurally sound it has walls it has insulation and it's good to go uh, and it's being contributed to the show uh, for a year and then we'll see what happens after 12 months time so so your contributions are what has you know brought us to this point and and has made it so that we can say yeah let's let's go ahead with this. We know that um, mm-hmm. the I guess the the biggest expenses that we're going to encounter that we've never had to deal with before being that category five has always been based in my house. Right. Right. You got to think about that Se- seventh season here, and it's always been in in my house, in my family home. So we have shared insurance. Mm-hmm. We have shared our internet connection. Right. which is a big one when you broadcast live every week. Uh, we've shared all the you know the heat and all of those kinds of expenses with the household mm-hmm. because we're in the house, so it's never been a problem. Now we're dealing with, okay, it's going to be a separate space. It's a little bit you know of a leap of faith, and we are counting on viewer contributions and, and you know your ability to perhaps um, take on the show in, in such a way. Maybe you want to contribute $10 a month or even $5 a month uh, through a contribution at cat5.tv slash c. That would make a world of difference if, you know, several of, of you uh, viewing from all around the world, if you would do that, um, then that's going to cover all those added, you know, new mm-hmm. expenses. But we're really, really excited about what it means for the show. I, I still really want to get a new camera because we're dealing with the failed camera over the past little while, and we're using a webcam, which is keeping things going, but it's, for you know, sure. it's only a temporary solution, <laughs> so... That's something that we do really need to to do. So our Indiegogo supporters, people who supported us through that campaign, uh, I promised that the funds that were provided are going to go toward yes. Studio D, even if we didn't meet our goal. And for the past few months, I've been trying to figure, okay, well, how that how's that going to happen? Mm-hmm. Now that we know, then the funds are going to go directly into um, transforming that space into cool. an appropriate studio for Category 5, making it um, as as good as can possibly be. We may see some green screen. We're not going to have a full virtual studio, but we are going to have some chroma key, and we're very excited to have a larger space. That's the big thing, eh? We're pretty cramped here. Yeah. You can see that we're we're trying to stay in the frame. But I mean... uh, My BO ain't too bad. It'd be nice to have a little bit more space for movement, and and who knows what wild things we can come up with with more space. And you have allergies. I mean, silly note. You don't think about these things. I know. But being in Robbie's house, we've got a cat, we've got a dog, we've got birds. We've. No, I'm I'm dying a little tonight. Sorry. That's how it is. And we don't really think about these things as you watch the show, but it's it's the way it is. And so having (laughs) a separate studio space with none of that kind of environmental allergens going on, uh, it's going to be quite nice mm-hmm. uh, for for those who are affected by that. <laughs> I.e. me. <laughs> so. But she does well. Oh, thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> 
Uh, Mr. Naturopathy is asking in the chat room if the show is going to be live more than once a week once we get into our new studio. And the uh, fact is, is that um, we are volunteers. Mm -hmm. We have to keep that in mind. Uh, the space is being donated. Um, your contributions help us to continue to do the show. Um, that's how we're able to afford you know, the expenses that do occur, yes. uh, especially now that we're going to have to pay for insurance and Internet connectivity and stuff like that. Um, so it is a Tuesday night every Tuesday night at 7. I don't see that changing, to be honest with you, um, but I'm you know, open to we're, we're looking at some, some things that Hillary and I have been talking about because uh, we want to see Category 5 in various regions of the world. But generally speaking, we're still we're keeping our day jobs. We're not uh, Category Five hasn't hired us and is paying us. You know. Unless you want to bring us on the road to your hometown. Yeah, that's it. So you know, <laughs> if if I mean, we're open to that. that you know, that's uh, that's a different thing. <laughs> Be cool. Uh, Rev D Jank has a coffee maker idea. Hamilton Beach makes a combo unit which does either a full pot or K cups. Ooh, you know what I think we're gonna do is probably like instant coffee for now because there's all these little considerations see Rev D. Jenk gets it we're gonna have to furnish the whole place we gotta buy a toilet seat well that's a must <laughs> seeing as how there's more women on the show than yeah men. yeah that's a must so I'm very very excited about it folks we're gonna have some fun over the next little while so and um, we'll be able to be a part of it right because I anticipate some uh Backstage footage happening. There is going to be some backstage footage. The one thing that I, uh, you know, one of the things that I promised during the Indiegogo campaign is that those of you who contributed, mm -hmm. you're going to have full backstage access to the build. Well, the build was originally going to be in my garage, so we've got internet. I don't know if we're going to have internet in time right. because get this, I get the keys on July 1st. This is happening two very weeks, quickly. Two weeks from today, folks. That's wild. We're in. So we're Very doing cool. a cleaning party, which is, you know, basically uh, I'm going to feed everybody and uh, and have snacks and stuff. Well, you know, I think many hands make light work is true. the saying, right? So Very if true. there's enough of us, we're going to get the place cleaned out and, and tip top shape, uh, ready to be drywalled and painted and stuff like that. Um, and then from there, it's really just let's see where it takes us. Let's see what uh, what this does to the show. I think what's interesting about Category 5, too, is that we're a community. It's not just a show. So this is as much your show as it is mine or Hillary's, and it's mm -hmm. an exciting totally. thing because we're just the ones that you see, but it's really all about all of us and what the show is about. So I'm excited to see where, where it's going to go. So. so Stay tuned, people. Loads of suggestions and things coming into the chat room. I'm oh, just going to say, you know, email me live at category5.tv if you want to Get your suggestions in. How you want to? Uh, how you want to see the studio? You know, if you've got ideas, things like that. Uh, if you're local, if you want to lend a hand, let us yeah, know. Yeah, that'd be great. If you have the funds to do so, please get over to cat5.tv/c and uh, contribute to the show. Monthly donations are really going to be a mm -hmm. huge help these days uh, as we move into uh, uh, this kind of a, an arrangement. Uh, if you can't do that, just a one-time donation would be extremely, extremely helpful. And we appreciate it very, very much. So thank you, everyone, for your support. And let's get ready. This is going to be a fun time. I'm excited. Season 8 is coming. I can't believe it. Holy and cow. And we're going to be in a new studio that's five times the size of what we're in right now. Woo Easy. Easy. So it's going to be great. It is going to be great. Thanks, TN Frank. <laughs> I'm still going to call you that. Thanks, everybody. See a lot of you in the chat room. Nice to see you. Okay, do we have any viewer questions that have come yeah, in through the actually, course of the show? We do. Um, All right. Here in my little mailbag over here, Voodoo Sandman. Hey, Voodoo Sandman. From Earth. Oh, Thank you yes, for right. clarifying Beautiful that planet. for us. Yeah. Um, hi, Robbie. Maybe you could review Android X86. I guess, oh. is this a follow-up thing? I don't, I'm not sure. I use it to tether unrooted cell phone with a share screen app. It uses the same resource footprint, but it won't show in Grub Dual Boot with Linux, only in Windows. I would like to have a dual monitor support as well. May you live long and thrive. All right. Android x86. Cool. Run Android on your PC. Hmm. We took a look at a similar kind of product way back on the show. I'm going to really, really quickly oh, see if so I can maybe this find is it. kind of a follow-up well that, that was an old show oh okay hmm. but it may I'm have not sure but isn't it a neat idea to be able to run say android os on your 
a virtual machine. That is cool. Because then you can, you know, you can do a lot with that. Very cool. Android-x86.org is where you're going to find it. Huh. Uh, looks like uh, we looked at Android VM to create an OpenGL accelerated Android 4.1 virtual machine. And uh, we looked at that on episode number 289. So similar kind of idea, I believe, but uh, cool. Thanks for the, yeah, the tip. Thank Check you. it out, folks, if you're interested in getting Android over to a PC. Very cool. All righty. Thanks for your question. I have another question here from Richard P. I recently started watching the show and I really like it. My question is about Linux. It seems to me that Linux is basically for geeks and the whole command line thing is not for me, at least for now. I would really like to try it out, but I think that I need to find a good book that explains Linux to someone who's a complete Linux newbie. Can you suggest something? Well, I'll tell you what. Besides our show... Yeah, of course. Category <laughs> five is the place. The. This is welcome to Linux. What do you want to do today? Get on the internet? Yeah. All right. Use an Office suite. Say you need Excel, so we're going to use LibreOffice Calc. Uh, what else do you want to do today? Play a game? Yeah, I like games. All right. Go for it. <laughs> Is Linux just for geeks? I think there was a day, and and I understand that you're watching Category 5 and you're seeing me use Linux and you're thinking, he's such a geek. Well, he is. He is. <laughs> no getting around it. But I do get excited about things like Linux. I talked about it with Belltone. It's something that improves the quality of life. Linux is that as far as operating systems go. Hmm. Do you need to use the terminal? Do you see me always? Okay, well, I want to play Scorched 3D, so I need to go in here and I need to... Uh, slash user slash bin slash... Scor- oh, I can't figure out the command. Scorch. Or... Can you? Am I just going to go games and <laughs> Just scor- open it. <laughs> there, just open it. Yeah, it's not. it doesn't have to be about the terminal. I'll tell you what I tend to do. And if you're getting that impression from Category 5 TV, I, l- I like to show you the terminal so that you won't be afraid of it, right? Because mm-hmm. if you've seen something done in a more sophisticated way, then you understand how it, how it, it, how it works. And I'm more of a computer scientist than I am a high school computer teacher. No offense to computer teachers in high school. <laughs> But rather than show you how to create or how to use Excel, I would rather show you how to, cre- how to actually create the data and, hmm. and work with the data and work with the computer. I'd rather you understand what it is that you're doing. So when I click on something on the menu, if, if I have a button that says root terminal, And I can click on that, and I can enter my password, and now all of a sudden I'm root. Well, that's fine, but isn't it better for me to actually understand that if I go into terminal and I type in SU and I become uh, an elevated user, for example, maybe that's a better way for me because I like to understand what's actually happening in the background. So do you need to use terminal? Absolutely not. Linux these days is set up so that a novice user, somebody who has never used mm-hmm. a computer or ever used Linux, you probably you could delete the terminal from the menu and you'd never know the difference. Uh, it would probably be safe to do that. Mm-hmm. And you'd never, you know, it's great. Lots of people are saying in the chat room, they're like, I've taught people who are over 60. I did it for my wife. I did it for my my mom. Exactly. And we actually did it here on the show for Sasha Dermatis. So next time she's on the show, why don't you give her her. the question, you know, how's Linux working out for you? Because Sasha is a self-professed not guru as far as computers (laughs) go. Fair enough. She uses a a phone to do all of her communication. She's never had, uh, you know, a computer she just got her laptop she was begging for one for christmas santa brought her one we put linux on it let's find out how she's doing all right and good call ask her this question how many times have you had to use the terminal she'll be like the what the what 
The what? I just bring up the internet. If I want on the internet, I bring up Chrome. Do you yeah. do that on Windows? Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing as far as how to use your computer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank Love you. it. Thank you for the comment and Look question. Look forward to your question next week. Mm-hmm. I think we have time for one more, Robbie. This comes to us from Dawn 43085. <laughs> hey, Dawn. Just watched your latest show. This is about two weeks ago and loved it. Amusing video. One person mentioned Manjaro, and I've been using it since December, and each upgrade has, has gone really well. Probably about 12 by now. One right. thing a user must do is read the stable release notes for the latest update. Okay. It often will know potential problems and steps on how to avoid them. Uh, you would advise to use the Manjaro for, oh, sorry, your advice to use the Manjaro forums was good also because I've had many questions answered that way through the forums. Yeah. People are prompt to reply. Oh, take care and I enjoy your enthusiasm. Cheers. This was a comment, not a question. Yeah, well, I appreciate the comment. We love comments. Sure. We love hearing from you. Manjaro is, you know, an up and coming kind of, it's rising in popularity. And, and certainly we're seeing that with the community here at Category 5. And with Manjaro, with Ubuntu, uh, with any of these distros, you know, I use Point Linux. They have their individual communities. Mm-hmm. And that's a brilliant thing. Here at Category 5, you can get into the chat room and start asking questions. And there will be people that will give you answers. Uh, we're a uh, uh, comparatively small community when you think about how large the Ubuntu community is, for example. Right. But there's always somebody there to help. So if you're trying Manjaro, yeah, get onto the, the forums and see who's there to help you. And I'm sure you're going to find people that are willing to help. Oh, yeah, of That's course. That's the difference. Yes. You, you find, I don't know if you've used any other operating systems, and you get into the forums and you ask questions and people start saying, what are you, dumb? Hmm. And it's just such a turn. It's just yeah, such it's a... a- put off as far yeah. as you know come on i just need help linux category 5 technology tv i think you're going to find that communities are genuinely and all across the board here to help yes and i think that's the mindset of linux and open source it's just we're all in this together it's a community and we're doing it together so totally welcome glad to hear you've installed manjaro and it's doing well for you yeah now, I know we're at nearing the end of the show, but right this is end. actually a quick question. I think you can answer okay. rather quickly. I'll do my best. So somebody checked out Sasha's tour of Studio D or Studio just the, D. Yeah, Glad the studio. Glad we did that because yeah. we're going to be gone from here. I know. Yeah. Sentimental. Um, and posted a question on the Google Plus page. What is the name of the app that we use to play uh, music cards on the iPad? This one. And even when I do the applause and stuff like Applauses. that. Applause. Yeah. Um, it's actually pretty cool. It's IAC. Uh, they do have a website if you want to check it out. If and I actually, it's time. I have to. I have to start the theme we have music. To do our theme music. How hard is that, right? So, um, so IAC can be found uh, on the web. Let's do a quick search. And by IAC, that is the. <laughs> it pulls up a lot of interesting know, searches. Yeah. So that's, uh, you can instant, find a specific, uh, instant audio cartwell. Let's try that. And it's available for uh, in the iTunes app store. Cool. There. Okay. So there IAC you know, being it. instant audio cartwell. Cartwell. There you go. That's what we use as our soundboard. It works fantastically well. Awesome. It really does. Is it available on other devices? Let's see. It's for iPad. There are... Other Cartwells for, um, and that's audiocartwell.com. There are other Cartwells for um, Android, and we used to use one, but then our Android tablet stopped working, so so we had to switch Mm -hmm. over to iPad, and and Becca was good enough to loan us her iPad to be able to replace the broken tablet. There you go, IAC. Great, great app. Well, that's all the time that we have tonight. Hard to believe. Flew right by. Thank you to That's our so sponsors, uh, Belltone, and do check them out, belltone.com. These are great. Cool. And you have a fantastic week. Hill, thanks for all your hard work tonight. Thank you. Thank you, everybody at home, and join us next Tuesday night. Bye. See ya. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. 
Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.